What up is Marcus? We have two days of mocking. And so this is going to be mocking rookies with landing spots. We have round one today, round two tomorrow. So if you want an example of where some of these players can fall to and where some of these players can rise up to, uh, watch today and tomorrow's video. We have a DeAndre Swift signed jersey. We're giving that away when we hit 2,000 subscribers. We're going to start off, we're going to do the first 12 today. There were some surprises, some things that I have even discussed. With a lot of these mockings, there's going to be some players that are going to rise. There's going to be some players that are going to fall a little bit. Depending on landing spot, we're going to have some crucial situations and crucial decisions to make. And so we're going to go right through it. Number one, B. John Robinson, round one to Dallas. It honestly doesn't really matter where he goes. It, I've seen him mock to Tampa. I've seen him mock to Dallas a bunch just because he was a Texas Longhorn and on a, it doesn't really matter as long as he doesn't go to the Jets or something or he doesn't go to the Giants and, and shares time with uh, Saquon. I mean, really, you're looking at a, a running back that, again, is that decade type of running back. And so if he goes to Dallas, that means that Zeke is no longer going to be there. Or if he's there, he's the uh, Zeke basically is that Mark Ingram to the J.K. Dobbins role, which means he's going to be the beginning part. And then you're going to see Zeke fade off into the sunset. And that means Tony Pollard is not back. That's what this means if you're putting a round one draft capital on Bijan. So I'm not even going to go through Bijan much. He's the number one running back. He's number one overall pick. This is super flex, by the way. So we're going to get to the decision of now 102. Where do you go? Do you go Jameer Gibbs? Do you go quarterback? This can be team dependent too. If you are a quarterback needy team, you might want to just take a quarterback here. Or if you look and you're like, man, I have, I, I still have some time in my rebuild then a running back is probably not the right position to go after. But if you're like, hey, I'm actually a team that looks like to be on the rise. Maybe you had some injuries last year. Uh, or maybe you just ran into some horrible luck. Or maybe you traded and got this pick somehow in your 102. I've done that before, too, where I've had actually a decent team and I just missed the playoffs. But yet I have 102 in like 105. And it's like I had two picks. Uh, so Jameer Gibbs is who I picked here. Jameer Gibbs goes to Kansas City in round one. I don't care. If this happens... Isaiah Pacheco, sorry, nice story. He's he's gone. Ceh, we've kind of seen the writing on the wall. He, uh, it just this ends up being Jameer Gibbs. Uh, I, I mean, I would just love this. I would love this because Jameer Gibbs becomes such a crucial point and another round one running back for Kansas City that picks what thirty or thirty first because Miami, of course, uh, does they don't have their first round pick. So Jameer Gibbs, round one, I just don't see this happening. But again, I have said that before where I'm like, I don't see that happening. And then all of a sudden teams do that. But I just, I, with Kansas City, I don't think that they can, I don't think they're going to be like, yep, running back is the position that we need. I think they are okay with saying Isaiah Pacheco, we'll find another Isaiah Pacheco type. We'll find another running back in the fourth, fifth, sixth round to compliment or to, to fill in that spot. And they, I think they might have some PTSD of CEH as long as we know we do <laughs> as fantasy owners and as, uh, as dynasty owners, we know we have some, probably some PTSD of a round running round one running back to, uh, to Kansas city, but Jameer Gibbs, uh, immediate star when he comes into uh, the league. And I think Kansas City is is plenty, a, a good spot for him. Not a horrible spot, not an okay spot. I think it's a good spot for him. Number, number, number three, we've been talking about him being the number two for so long. It is Bryce Young. Bryce Young goes to Houston. Man, I don't know how many times I'm going to be able to say this. Bryce Young, Bryce Young goes to Houston. I feel like I say this every single day or every single video that I have rookie uh, mock draft. I have not seen him mocked anywhere besides Houston um, in the 12 mock drafts that I have looked at, I think, pretty much so far. It's been him and Houston. Of course, there'll be trades that happen into the actual NFL draft. But as for now, Bryce Young goes to Houston, and he will either be 102 or 103 in my rankings, depending if Jameer Gibbs goes to a really good spot or if Jameer Gibbs ends up going to a eh or bad spot um if you if he goes to like a new england i'm not going to be, be very happy with that just because new england running backs end up being a mess but anyway so bryce young houston number four and this is again the same situation you have these three players you have jameer gibbs bryce young and then you have cj stroud which is gonna be number four overall here so um cj stroud raiders Pick, uh, and this is a little bit of a surprise because there's a quarterback that was taken ahead of C.J. Stroud. But there has been some whisperings of 
quarterback, uh, a, a quarterback, and we'll talk about him very shortly, that is going ahead of C.J. Stroud here. And if he goes to the Raiders, he's going to have Devontae Adams, which is going to be very nice. He's going to have Darren Waller ending, getting towards the end of his career. And we'll see what that running back position ends up being. I mean, at this point, based off of this draft, I think it's going to be Zamir Gibbs and a player to be named tomorrow. Um, in in the, in the dynasty, well, when I mean named tomorrow, I mean that he got drafted in around two of our dynasty rookie draft. Um, so number, number five, by the way, CJ Stroud, I think, is a very adequate pick here at number five, four. Number five, this is where usually he's moved down a little bit. He's usually behind a wide receiver or two here at least. But Will Levis goes to Indianapolis, which means I think that's the number four pick. I think it's number four. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I think it's number four. Whatever it is. Um, Will Levis, or I've seen Indianapolis mocked at four. They, they, it's always Houston and Indianapolis taking a quarterback. Seems like the Raiders are too. Uh, so Will Levis gets picked number 105 here. Again, the, the the situations you're looking at, uh, draft capital, and you're looking at, okay, is he a top five? Is he a top ten pick? That is going to move a quarterback up because you have to hit quarterbacks in when it comes to super flex. You have to at least try because you never know. If you don't hit, go after the the Herberts, if you, the, the, which he was the third quarterback taken in his draft, if you never go after the Josh Allens or anything like that, and I'm not saying that Will Levis is that, then you are going to miss out. And, and sometimes you're going to end up getting a Josh Rosen. It's going to happen. Or you're going to end up getting a Baker Mayfield. Or you're going to end up getting a quarterback that ends up not being sufficient. You're, you're going you're, you're gonna to bust on some of them. That's what happens. That's what NFL teams do. But when you hit, when you hit, that is what can change a super flex dynasty franchise for your team. And so you have to do that here. Will Levis, 105. I'm actually going to take a sip of my... I, I've just been trying out Ghost Energy. Um, this is like Sour Patch. It's like liquid Sour Patch. Mm, delicious. Not sponsored at all. Just you first tried it a couple days ago. And it is absolutely delicious. I've needed some extra energy. Woo! Yeah, it, if you ever have not tried that, it's basically like liquid Sour Patch. Which has actually cr uh, stopped some of my, my sugar cravings. So, hey. <laughs> Whatever it is. Anyways, sidebar. Back to the Dynasty Mock Draft here. Um, we have number 106 here, and this has been JSN all along, but it's not going to be in this mock. We are going to do Jordan Addison here. Jordan Addison goes to Seattle. I think Tyler Lockett is going to the dwindling end of his career. Geno Smith has showed that DK Metcalf and a wide receiver, too, can be sufficient on an offense. And I think Geno Smith is here to stay. I think I really do. And I think that uh, Pete Carroll has been known to have two sufficient wide receivers. And I think Jordan Addison, with that skill set that he does, he's a great route runner, great separator. Um, I love his spot here. And so I have him slightly just like a, a, a cat hair ahead of JSN here, which JSN number seven, he goes to the Ravens. And the only reason why, well, number one, Lamar doesn't have, it, it, whether it's Mark Reese Brown or whether it's been anybody else, doesn't seem they've been a successful wide receiver, not named Mark Andrews, who's a tight end. Um, it just, uh, JSN, this is not the spot I want for you. Things can happen in the NFL to change so drastically. I mean, Lamar could go somewhere else and then all of a sudden they could have Jimmy Garoppolo for all we know as a Raven. And if that happens, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, then that's not a bad position. It's why we don't want to put all of our weight on landing spot, because landing spot can change so quickly. I mean, look at A.J. Brown and, and Devonta Smith. It's the great, one of the greatest examples of Devonta Smith. Oh, he's going to be an eagle. But Jalen Hurts runs, and then Jalen Hurts improved, and then A.J. Brown came over, and then uh, it's like Devonta Smith's stock went way down. And it's like, well, maybe A.J. Brown is actually taking coverage away. Jalen Hurts has improved. Like, lots of things happen. I mean, Buffalo seemed to be like a dead spot for wide receivers because Josh Allen was so inaccurate, and all of a sudden Josh Allen made this huge, huge improvement. Lamar's not going to make those improvements at this point in his career, I don't believe. But we'll see if he's actually the starting quarterback or not. Maybe they'll get Pro Bowl or Tyler Huntley to start. Oh, that's a different story for a different day. I, I, I'm so bitter on that. Anyways, JSN Ravens, round number one. We didn't really get to talk to about him, but he's my number one wide receiver in this class right now without a landing spot. Um, I, I love him. The, I, I think that you look at the track record of Ohio State wide receivers. I think JSN is the best wide receiver to come out of Ohio State between him, Garrett Wilson, and uh, Chris Olave. And so that just shows what I value uh, JSN at. And then they have Marvin Harrison Jr. coming out next year, and he's even better than all three of them. So it just keeps getting better. I'm just waiting for who's after Marvin Harrison Jr. I, mean, I don't know. Um, so number eight here is Quinton Johnston, and he goes to the Giants. Now, Giants are a okay spot. I mean, they, they seem to be able to 
have adequate fantasy ability to Isaiah Hodgins. Uh, at times, Darius Slayton. Um, not Kenny Doll not Kenny Galladay. <laughs> but Quentin Johnson is a bigger body like Kenny Galladay. And Kenny Galladay is just going to be, I don't know, sitting on the bench. It, I, who knows what Kenny Galladay is actually going to be doing. But uh, Quentin Johnson here at the Giants, round one. Round one draft capital, an okay landing spot, assuming Daniel Jones stays. That's where I have uh, him here. And then we get kind of a little bit, eh, we didn't even necessarily a huge tier break, but number nine, this is where we, we start getting uh, that running back that hits a draft capital and landing spot. You have to have that round two, round three draft capital, and you've got to hit that landing spot. And for Devin A. Chain, which I might, I, I, depending on when this video comes out, I've either done a video on him or uh, I will be doing a short on him. And he has amazing speed. I mean, we're talking Chris Johnson speed. We're talking 4-2 speed. He is a sprinter. I mean, he is an amazingly fast running back. Very intriguing. He could end up being a bust. I mean, we've seen running backs that have been extremely fast and have not done anything. But gosh, is that speed just tempting. When you have that that 0.1 percentile speed, that, that Tyreek Hill, Chris Johnson speed on the field... It, it's just something that you, you just can't replicate. And so in this situation, he goes to Arizona, which I like Arizona as a spot for him. Uh, Arizona, again, a higher powered offense when clicking right. Kyler Murray won't be there. I think Devin A. Chain is a round two draft capital. You're looking at, okay, he is the starting running back or he is going to be thrown into the role of a, a, a running back that is going to have a lot of usage at some point in his first 12 to 18 months. And so I love Devin A. Chain here. At number 10, you're going to have the same situation. Round two draft capital, Miami, Zach Charbonnet. And I, he was actually one of my sleepers, which at this point, we don't know who sleepers are. <laughs> and when I mean that, I mean, we don't know who's going to be uh, at ADP wise. Zach, uh, in, him and Devin A. Chain could be end of second if you put put these both at round four and two bad landing spots we're gonna be talking about them in the 20s not at nine and ten and that just shows the difference between when you get from that like nine to 20 range draft capital combine and then we start filtering through some of the details of the tape of like okay system wise and everything is uh, are they gonna work out like damian pierce was one of the best examples of that uh, well Damian Pierce was round four, but if he was round three, it would have been even better. Round four draft capital, but went to a landing spot where you could say A+. plus, Like, had all the usage in the world. And so, then you look at the opposite, which was Isaiah Spiller. Had horrible draft capital and was put on a potentially horrible situation when you have Austin Eckler RB1 in fantasy sitting in into that realm. And so, uh, just know that some of these running backs, again, are two, three window, two, year, two to three year window guys... And so you need to see if you can find immediate production through some of these players. Um, number 11 here, and we haven't even talked about him much, but Jalen Hyatt, he is a round one draft pick, draft pick to Buffalo. Now, I don't think, I've never been a Gabriel Davis lover, I guess you could say. I've always said, eh, Gabriel Davis is not an amazing player. I, I've even said that Khalil Sh Shakir is kind of, what you, you're going to see some ups and downs from him as well. But I, I was like, yeah, they're kind of the same they're not the same player, but you're just gonna you're gonna get some eh out of him. I think Jalen Hyatt actually puts the wide receiver to where you're supposed to be. I think he is actually going to be an adequate wide receiver. I mean, there's plenty of offenses that can deal with well, two wide receivers. Buffalo is easily one of them. That's why he has to be number eleven here. Number twelve. This is hard. This is gonna be the hardest person to project where to put him into this like ten to sixteen range. Michael Mayer. Out of Green Bay, if it's tight end premium, you're probably going to have him over Jalen Hyatt. You might even have him at nine if it's tight end premium. I, I just assume not tight end premium. Uh, so Michael Mayer's 12 here, goes to Green Bay. Again, you're, Green Bay has been notorious for just neglecting their tight ends, basically, besides one year of Tanyan. And it's been a little bit sprinkled in with Rodgers, but not much. The biggest thing that I will say, though, is that Aaron Rodgers might not be there. It might be Jordan Love, and he might want to just dump it off to his tight end. So this might be a big... Uh, 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 Michael Mayer might actually have an okay first year. And so those are the top 12. We have 13. Actually, I wrote it all the way down to 26. Uh, for, we even have, there's a round one, bunch of round twos, threes, four players here. Uh, so I'm excited to see 
what you guys think of round of, of the round one of the Dynasty Mock Draft. We're going to do round two here tomorrow. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anybody that you're like, ah. Especially if you watch tomorrow's video and then go back and comment to this. It'd probably be even better because you can go, hey, why did you not have... Uh, why do you not have Josh Allen or, or Zay Flowers or Anthony Richardson? Why are they not into this video? And I will let you know why I believe that. All right. This is Marcus Nice with Dads. Peace out. We'll see you tomorrow in round two.